Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. In this video, we will see the different types of bonding agents that are available to us, how to use these materials and the evidence-based protocols for its use. This video is a continuation of the earlier video on enamel and dentine bonding. The previous one revolved around the fundamental mechanism of enamel and dentine bonding. The objective of this video is to summarize the current concepts of dental adhesion. With so many dentine adhesives in the market, we often get confused which one to use and what is the difference between them? Are the newer ones better? Can one single type be used for both direct as well as indirect restorations? Continue watching this video to answer all your doubts and queries regarding bonding agents. So let's get started. First, we'll begin with the classification. So there are bonding agents classified according to generations, which I'm sure most of you are aware of, from the first to eighth generation. However, the classification that I will be elaborating on is the one based on the type of application in the clinic, because that is a more practical classification. So this includes etch and rinse adhesives, self etch adhesive and universal adhesives. First, we shall discuss the etch and rinse adhesive systems. These are also called as total etch systems. The total etch adhesive systems were introduced in the early 1900s. Initially, when it was introduced, it involved essentially three steps. The first step was acid etching. Second step was application of primer. And the third step involved application of the adhesive resin or the bonding agent. Elaborating on the steps further, in the first step, 37% phosphoric acid is applied to the enamel and dentine tissue simultaneously. And that is why it is called as a total etch technique. It is kept for a certain period of time for 15 to 30 seconds and then the acid is rinsed away from the tooth surface. This process removes the smear layer and the smear plugs on the enamel and dentine. Now, on the enamel, acid etching selectively dissolves the enamel rods, creating macro and micro porosities which are readily penetrated by bonding agents. So this works very well for the enamel. And this micromechanical interlocking of resin tags on the acid etched enamel is the reason for the highest bond strength. But what happens to the dentine? As already mentioned, it is the total etch technique that we are following. So we are obviously applying etchant on the dentine as well. Here, acid etching causes dentine to demineralize and exposes the collagen fibrils that is totally depleted of hydroxyapatite. We also have to remember here that after application of the etchant, we rinse it off and dry the tooth surface, right? Now, if we over dry it, there is a tendency for these collagen fibers to completely collapse. And if it is over wet, again, the bonding is compromised. So to overcome this compromised adhesion on the dentine, the second step involves application of a primer containing HEMA, that is 2-hydroxyethyl methacrylate, dissolved in organic solvents like acetone, ethanol or water. This primer improves the wettability and causes re-expansion of the collagen network, promoting penetration of the bonding agent more effectively. The primer molecules are bipolar and contain two different functional groups. Of these, the hydrophilic one interacts with the moist dentine, while the hydrophobic one interacts with the adhesives. To know more in depth about how enamel and dentine bonding differs and what exactly happens, please watch the first part of the video. The link is in the description box below. The final step involves application of the dentine bonding agent. So, after the primer is applied, the bonding agent is applied on the surface with a micro brush and then polymerized. Next, these etch and rinse adhesives can be either three-stage or two-stage systems. In the two-stage system, the primer and adhesive resin or the bonding agent are combined in a single bottle. This is done to minimize steps for the ease of the operator. However, it should be noted that between the two, the two-step system results in lower bond strength on the dentine due to the reduced ability to infiltrate the demineralized dentine substrate. Next, we have the self etch adhesives. self etching systems, as the name suggests, does not require an additional etching and rinsing step, making them less technique sensitive. Instead, they contain acidic primers, which can simultaneously etch and prime the dental substrate. And this is followed by the application of the bonding agent or the adhesive resin. One advantage of this system is that it is not sensitive to changes in dentine moisture that is over wet or over dry condition. 
Therefore, the possibility of error during application decreases. Self-etch adhesive systems are categorized based on their pH from ultra light to strong. The working principle of these adhesives is based on not removing the smear layer but on modifying it. Because there is no separate etching step involved, they cause minimal dissolution of smear tags without eliminating the smear layer. And the bonding agent infiltrates this partially demineralized dentine and the hybrid layer is formed intertwined with the smear layer. One drawback of self-etch adhesive is that it does not produce as effective roughening of the enamel as etch and rinse adhesives. And for this reason, it is recommended to acid etch the enamel to increase its bond strength. Basically, what you have to do is selectively etch the enamel surface when using self-etch adhesive systems. Self-etch systems can be either single-step adhesives or two-step adhesives. Two-step self-etching adhesive consists of two separate components. The first bottle containing primer and acid and the second bottle containing hydrophobic bonding resin. Whereas the single step contains all the components in one bottle. Although single step system reduces the hassle of application of different components on the tooth surface, they are known to have lower clinical success. So the better option is to go with the two-step adhesives than with the single bottle system. Now, one common question with the self etch systems is that if it can be used in indirect restorations. So, most of the self etch adhesives are light cure ones, but you do get dual cure activators. So, using these dual cure activators, you can definitely use self etch systems for indirect restorations. Having said that, the preferred option when using self etch adhesive is to at least selectively etch the enamel surface. To enhance the enamel bond. Lastly, moving on to the universal adhesives. These are the most versatile multi-purpose adhesives as they can be used with any technique that is total edge, self edge or selective edge. Moreover, these universal adhesives can be used for both indirect as well as direct restorations and are compatible with all type of resin cements. Also, it bonds to all the different types of materials that is metal, zirconia, porcelain and composite. Additionally, it contains MDP which is a monomer that enables universal adhesive to be used with any etching technique. It also helps promote a strong adhesion to the tooth surface and also to zirconia indirect restorations. Some universal adhesives may also contain silane in their formulation, potentially eliminating the silanization step when bonding to glass ceramics. Since most people that I know use universal adhesives, let us look at some of the recommendations or some of the protocols that are to be followed when using them. So, when using universal adhesive for only enamel bonding, it is preferred to go with an etch and rinse or total etch technique. When only dentine is involved, then go ahead with a self etch or a selective etch technique depending on the case. For direct restorations, Depending on the amount of enamel present or the amount of dentine present, you will have to decide between a total edge technique or etch and rinse technique or a selective edge technique. When it comes to indirect restorations, cases involving predominantly dentine, for example, crown preparations, it is better to go for a self etch technique and cases involving predominantly enamel, for example, veneers or diastema closures, you can go ahead with a total edge technique. A total edge technique would also be preferred for bonding to sclerotic dentine. The next question that we will answer is that should a universal adhesive be used as a primer for glass based ceramics? Now we've already discussed that a lot of universal adhesives have silane incorporated within the solution itself. So is it possible to use universal adhesive instead of a separate silane primer? The answer is no. Based on a lot of research, it has been observed that the bond strength of glass ceramics is not as great when using universal adhesives alone. So it is better to not substitute universal adhesive for a separate silane primer. One more commonly asked question is that should a universal adhesive be used as a primer when bonding to zirconia? Yes, it can be used as zirconia primer if it contains 10 MDP. Here I would recommend you to read the manufacturer's instructions as not all universal adhesives contain 10 MDP. If it is absent, then it is better to use a separate zirconia primer or use a resin cement which contains 10 MDP.
Finally, to summarize everything that we have learned so far, when it comes to H and Rinse adhesives, you get the best enamel bonds. It is a very good strategy for both direct and indirect restorations when it is limited to only the enamel. They may cause post-operative sensitivity if it is used in the dentine and if you do not follow the proper protocol. And finally, the three-step system is better when compared to the two-step system. Moving on to the self-etch systems. So one drawback of self-etch system is that it does not demineralize the enamel surface enough to provide a very good bond to the enamel. Therefore, selective etching of the enamel is preferred. When it is only limited to dentine, self-etch systems are great. The two-step system is considered to be better than the single bottle system. Self-etch systems can be used both in direct as well as indirect restorations. When it is indirect, then it is preferred to use a dual cure activator, which are available these days. Coming to universal adhesives, these are the most versatile and can be used with any technique that is etch and rinse, self etch or selective etch. And the strategy depends on the case, whether the case involves predominantly enamel or dentine or whether you are using direct or indirect restoration. Here also one thing that you need to note is that universal adhesives also come with dual cure activators. So read the manufacturer's instructions if you can use the same universal adhesive without dual cure activators for indirect restoration then great. Otherwise you will have to use it along with a dual cure activator. With this we come to an end. We have discussed the commonly used dental adhesives. One thing I want to stress on is that whichever technique you use, it largely depends on the operator's efficiency as well. So follow the manufacturer's recommendations thoroughly, something that we often neglect. Do give me your inputs on what bonding agent or strategy you prefer. It would be great to learn what works best for you. And if you have any questions, do mention them in the comment section below. And before you leave, don't forget to like, share and subscribe to my channel.